Well, you've been blessed this week. I can actually tell you why. It's because the gospel is a message of blessing. And that's what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you that the gospel is that God is going to bless you. <clears throat> now, we've read a lot from Galatians this week. The Galatians were being plagued by another gospel, another which, God, which Paul said, this isn't even a gospel, this isn't good news, because this only brought a curse upon the people who followed it. See, this gospel, so-called, was based upon the law of Moses, and it emphasized what men did and not what God did. Yet this false gospel claimed that it was God's original and unchanging plan for men, and therefore must be embraced in order to receive salvation. They reasoned that since the law was what God had already given, we must still adhere to the law in order to receive blessing from the Lord. However, in his letter to the Galatians, Paul vehemently contends that the only true gospel was spoken to Abraham hundreds of years before the law. Now this gospel consists of a promise, a seed, and a blessing received by faith. Amen. So let's look into this gospel that was preached to Abraham. I'm going to read some more context from the text. And if you would, turn with me to Galatians 3, because uh, throughout the sermon, we're going to be going back to this, and I'm going to end up going through almost the whole chapter here. So I'd, I'd appreciate if you'd follow along. Galatians 3, verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. These people who came teaching the false doctrine to the Galatians thought that the gospel was something new. They thought this was something that, that, that Paul just came up with, something introduced. However, Paul says that this very word was preached back in the very beginning, back in Genesis, this was God, God preached the gospel back to Abraham. And what was this gospel that he preached? The gospel that he preached was that all nations would be blessed in Abraham. The gospel is a word of blessing. Now this makes sense because what does the go word gospel mean? It means good news. And what does the word blessing mean? It means something good from God. So the gospel is the good news about good things from God. Now God has always wanted to bless his people. This is the nature, this is the character of God to want to bless his creation. When he created man, God blessed him. It said God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. The first thing God said to people was a blessing. God desires to bless men. And as Manoah's wife found out, the Lord is not pleased to kill us. However, after men sinned, God's righteousness held in check his desire to bless fallen men. Because God was not going to permanently bless sin. He could not by his nature. Yet in Abraham, we see that God was not content to leave it this way. We see that he preached the good news, the gospel, that he would devise a way to bless men eternally, and it was going to be in Abraham and in Abraham's seed. Paul, in Galatians 3, quotes from Genesis chapter 12. Let's look at that. This is the where we are introduced to Abraham. Genesis 12, 1, 
Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now it's one thing for God to bless someone. God has blessed many people throughout the years. God's blessed many nations throughout the years. But this is something different because God told Abraham that he would be a blessing. And not just a blessing to, to a few people, to those who, was, who he was around. In fact, the blessing of Abraham touches the world. And it is what is called the gospel. <clears throat> now the blessing to Abraham was actually repeated many times to Abraham and to his descendants. I want to pick out one more time here. That was from Genesis 12. This is from Genesis 22. And we see a little different aspect of this blessing here. We see the concept of a seed introduced in Genesis 22. After Abraham offered Isaac... God said to him, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. So here we, we get a few more details on the blessing of Abraham. We see that God's words are not only for Abraham, but a seed is introduced. For this seed there is promised divine favor and unparalleled prosperity. Great blessing upon the seed of Abraham. There is also a separate blessing for the rest of the nations of the earth. <clears throat> but we see that this blessing is provided in his seed. Now, we're going to make more of this later, but Genesis 12, Genesis 22 offer slightly different perspectives. Genesis 12 say they're blessed in Abraham. That's true. Genesis 22 perspective is that we are blessed in the seed of Abraham. And Paul ends up making a distinction later on in Galatians 3. We talk about here about the centrality of the gospel. A short note on this. This is repeated many times to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, because this is important. This is important not because this is an obscure history lesson about one small nation in one small part of the world. This is central to God's purpose in the world because the blessing of Abraham is the gospel of Christ. So we must ask, what is the blessing of Abraham? Sure, blessing is good, but what is it? Well, in Galatians 3.9, the verse after our text, it says, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So if we're going to get blessed along with Abraham, what was Abraham blessed with? <clears throat> well, here's something he was blessed with. It says, Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. So is, is the blessing of Abraham that you get a bunch of cattle, a bunch of silver and gold, is it riches? Is it prosperity on this earth? Well, no, it's not, because many other people had riches and prosperity, yet that didn't bless the world. There had to be something greater to bless, bless all nations. <clears throat> and here's what it is. Genesis 15, 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, righteousness is the most valuable commodity to a, a race of fallen men. And so when we talk about good news, we're talking about the blessing of Abraham as in the righteousness that was imputed to Abraham by faith. Peter in his sermon in Acts 3, identifies this blessing as being righteousness and forgiveness of sins. 
He says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. How? In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. This is the true blessing. Though some may scoff at the thought of being turned away from from the iniquities that they so love. Being freed from the power and the penalty of sin is of immeasurable worth. This is the greatest blessing, and this is the gospel. <laughs> Romans 4 puts it like this, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sin are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is the blessing, and David recognized this as well. <clears throat> Getting what you worked for is not a blessing. It's, it's an earning. But the blessing of Abraham is not getting righteousness you earned. The blessing of Abraham is God giving you righteousness that you didn't earn. That's what blessing is. And blessing is taking away the wickedness that you did earn. And we could talk more about that, but, but there, the blessing of Abraham, think of that as kind of like a preparatory blessing. And what I mean by that is in blessing you and taking away your sins and giving you righteousness, God has opened up the door for him to bless you in all the other ways that he desires to bless you. Later on in Galatians it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So God blessed us in giving us righteousness so then he could send his Spirit to us. The blessing of Abraham opened the door to many blessings. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. So in the blessing of Abraham, God blessed us in letting us approach him. And in the end, Jesus will say, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So the blessing of Abraham is not like a one-time thing, but it's a, it's a blessing that opens the door for, for blessings to come. <clears throat> Now that's the first critical part of the gospel, understanding what is the blessing of Abraham. But the second part, which is just as critical, is understanding how we get it. I, if you understand what the blessing of Abraham is, you realize it is wonderful, it is glorious. But we need to know how we get the blessing of Abraham. Now in Galatians, Paul's crystal clear answer is by faith apart from the law. <laughs> However, since how we obtain the blessing of Abraham is so critical to the gospel, Paul spends the rest of the chapter confirming this answer. Now, I've got like seven or eight different ways that Paul confirms this. It's by faith and it's apart from the works of the law. First of all, and I hope you're still in Galatians 3. First of all, we don't get the blessing of Abraham by the law because it was given to all nations. When he says, in thee shall all nations be blessed, well, there he just eliminated the law because the law was only for one nation. That's argument number one. By number two, in verse 9, it says, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. It's by faith because Abraham received the blessing by faith. Abraham is the father of faith, 
and we enter into his blessing the same way he received it. It is by faith. You can't get Abraham's blessing through the law because Abraham is a man of faith. Now follow along with me then in verse 10 of Galatians 3. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The blessing of Abraham is get, you get by faith because the law only gave you a curse. The law can't give you a blessing. Paul says it's by faith because of what Habakkuk said. Verses 11 and 12. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. That's a quote from Habakkuk. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. It's by faith because it was prophesied to be by faith. <clears throat> Verses 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now here Paul argues that it can be by faith because Christ took upon himself the curse so we could be freed from the clutches of the law. We can be free to obtain the blessing by faith because, because Christ freed us from the law in taking our curse. Now I'm going to skip verse 16 and come back to it in a minute. Verse 15 of Galatians 3. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Verse 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So Paul says it can't be by the law because that wasn't the original way the promise was made. When God blessed Abraham, it was by a promise. It wasn't, it wasn't conditional upon the law. In fact, the law wouldn't show up for another 430 years. So. When these people were saying that you get the blessing by the law, well, they were missing the point that, that the law was, was second. The law came after the promise of the blessing. <clears throat> now, verse 16 goes along with verses 19 and 20. So I'll read that now. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now here's where we make the distinction between the Genesis 12 perspective and the Genesis 22 perspective. In Genesis 12, we were blessed. The blessing was to Abraham. In Genesis 22, the blessing is to Abraham's seed. And this kind of refines our understanding of this. <clears throat> Certainly, Abraham was blessed. But God promised a blessing to Abraham's seed. And Paul points out that this is not to a group of descendants. This isn't to seeds. This is to one seed. And he, Paul makes the point that the promise of blessing was actually made to Christ. The blessing of Abraham goes to Jesus. And so in verses 19 and 20, he argues upon this. And he asks, wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. It was given because the seed wasn't come yet. It says it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So Paul argues that the blessing of Abraham is not by the law because the law was never intended to give people access to the blessing. <clears throat> From the Genesis 22 perspective, there is only one intended recipient of ble the blessing, and that is Christ, the seed of Abraham. It was only meant to Christ. <clears throat> and 
And therefore, the people to whom the law was given were not even promised the blessing. The blessing was promised to the seed. It was promised to Christ. And therefore, when the law was, was given to the people, it wasn't meant for them to get the blessing. They weren't promised the blessing in the first place. <clears throat> now, in regards to what he has to say about the mediator, I know there are many opinions on this. Uh, here's how I see it, though. <clears throat> he said, the mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Now, God and Christ are one. Since they are one, the promise that the Father would bless the Son needed no mediator because it was God promising essentially to himself, to one that was one with him. Now, the fact that the law was given in the hand of a mediator tells us that the law had nothing to do with the promise of the blessing because the promise of the blessing needed no mediator but the law was given with a mediator. The law was something different altogether. The law was given to those who were not the promised seed. <clears throat> but if we're talking about how you get the, the blessing, then this kind of throws a monkey wrench into the situation. Why? Because, yes, we all want the blessing, right? We all want to receive the promise that God made to Abraham, but here's the problem. In verses 16 and 19, Paul says that the promise of the blessing was not made to us. It is actually made to Christ. The blessing of Abraham was given to Christ. So how do we receive it? Well, I want to read verses 26 through 29 of the chapter. And Paul kind of brings everything together here. And he says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And here's the key. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so now we see how faith plays into it. Yes, the blessing was made to Christ, but by faith we are united with Christ so that we get to share in the blessing of Abraham even though it was made to Christ. <clears throat> and thus the promise is fulfilled that all nations of the earth are blessed in Abraham's seed. You can't get the blessing apart from the seed to whom it was promised. You're blessed in him. <clears throat> Paul says, all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So the blessing of Abraham is not obtainable outside of Christ. We only get the blessing of Abraham because Jesus did first. <clears throat> We've already mentioned the passage in Ezekiel 34 talking about the shepherd where God says I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them even my servant David he shall feed them he shall be their shepherd and then he says and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David a prince among them I the Lord have spoken it and I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods, and I will make them and the places round about my hills a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. <laughs> now with the earthly shepherds, there was a lack of food, there was scattered sheep, there was confusion, but, but when the good shepherd was set up, there are showers of blessing. So we are blessed in the seed of Abraham as our shepherd comes, and be, comes over us. We receive the blessing in him. We're all familiar with Ephesians 1. But notice how this passage fulfills the prophecy of being blessed in Abraham's seed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
Put, put in the seed of Abraham there. He, he says you get, you get the blessing of Abraham as you're in the seed of Abraham. He's given us, he's made us holy and without blame before him. He's made us children. He's made us accepted in the beloved and we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We are blessed as we are in the blessed seed. Now I'd like to conclude with a few words on, on this phrase, all nations. The promise was, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Now when one nation becomes great, it's normally at the expense of the other nations, right? When, when David and Solomon increased their kingdom, it was at the expense of the countries around them. Well, this is because David and Solomon weren't the promised seed. See, this is a blessing which, when, when Christ is increased, it actually serves to bless all those around it. All nations are blessed in this. <clears throat> and that includes you. Hebrews 6.13, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. So this is a promise to Abraham. Why is Hebrews telling us this? Well, then it talks about God confirming it with an oath and speaking it. It says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hope, hold on the hope set before us. Now, wait a minute. This promise, this was to Abraham. God promised and God swore it to Abraham, but here it says that we might have a strong consolation. And in this we see we are included in the blessing of Abraham. He's made us a part of that. <clears throat> we receive the, very, the same hope that Abraham received. And I'll finish with this. Isaiah 19, 21. We see here the fulfillment of the blessing of Abraham. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. And, he sh and the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite it and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt my people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel mine inheritance. So here you see not just Israel getting the blessing, you see, it's not just through the law. It's not through one nation in one way. It is, it is through the, the one way of faith in Christ. And that blessing can be to all nations. Well, this is the gospel. This is, this is the good news that what God said to Abraham back so many years ago has been the theme of the, the, word, of, the word that we have from God and that this blessing is available and offered to us in the seed of Abraham.